Global Ethics Corner from the Carnegie Council. Do markets work for everyone? Do markets promote the greatest good for the greatest number? In advancing the general welfare, what is the role of government and of social collectives like labor unions? Supporters of neoliberal economics argue that free markets are the key to prosperity and long-term growth, which ultimately benefit all. Therefore, markets should be strengthened and government involvement minimized. Markets will reach a balance, and the accumulated wealth eventually and inevitably turns into jobs. Critics argue that neoliberal economics increases inequalities and leaves some behind. Social ills are aggravated by neoliberal reforms like deregulation, privatization of public services, and reduction of social expenditures. Social protections are eroded and individuals' vulnerability is increased by higher fees for social programs in health, education, income support, and housing. As evidence that neoliberal policies do not work, critics cite the widening socioeconomic gap in the United States since the Reagan era. In Latin America and Africa, Canadian politician Stephen Lewis argues that neoliberal structural adjustment programs imposed by the World Bank and the IMF shredded social sectors and resulted in user fees for health and education. Consequently, Lewis writes, today many children who should be in school and who desperately want to be in school cannot be in school because they cannot afford the fees. What do you think? Should long-term economic growth promised by a free market be prioritized over concerns about inequality? How do you balance a society's need both to create wealth and ensure welfare? This is William Vokey. Made possible by the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. Post a comment at www.carnegiecouncil.org.